nothing to do with, with anything. Yeah. One of the tragedies that I've seen throughout the Muslim world is the assault against traditional Sufi right. Islam. Right. And I think it's fairly well documented that Wahhabism, which has fed ideologically uh, many of these movements we see, and of course with Saudi money, was certainly at its inception promoted by Western interests. Uh, I think during the Ottoman Empire, the, the British stoked Wahhabism as a way to fight against Sufi influence, and, and, and of course the, the current ruling Saudi family has embraced it. Uh, we saw with the oil deals uh, in the early 1930s, uh, you know, even to the point of American oil companies paying for the publication of Wahhabist literature and because of the financial resources, this has poisoned much of the religious discourse, uh, I think you would agree, throughout not only the Muslim world, but even beyond. Well, I think what's happened, the, the, I think the traditionalists, what we'd call the traditionalists, which certainly Sufism was a, a, a large part of classical Islamic tradition, the, the traditionalists have never dealt with the fact that they, they ossified into a very sterile tradition with a lot of, it was no longer a living tradition. You know, in Catholicism, they, they differentiate between tradition and traditionalism. The tradition is the, the living faith of the dead. Traditionalism is the dead faith of the living. And in many ways, they are, uh, this is what happened. And so there were reactions to that. Uh, what's called Wahhabism, they don't like to be called Wahhabis, but what's called Wahhabism was actually a, a type of Protestant reformist movement um, in, in uh, Arabia that eventually allied with uh, a, a political force, uh, Al Saud. And so the religious and the political became allied in this. And, and because of the petrodollars, they were able to spread a, a, a very different type of Islam that most of the Muslim world was comfortable with.